an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. The whole thing is, is to tap into the anointing to know all things. And that is going to be essential in these last hours and last days. Is to be anointed, to be able to tap into the anointing. We call it catch the anointing. That's tapping into the anointing. It's an area where we must go deeper in the spirit of God. You know, there are many believers who just read the Bible and think they're saved. But even Jesus rebuked them. He said, you search the scriptures thinking you're saved, but you won't come to me to get saved. Amen. He didn't come to them and say, listen, believe me. He said, follow me. Amen. Follow me. He said, but you have the anointing from who? The Holy One, the Holy Spirit. And you know all things. In other words, you will know what's coming. You will know what's happening right now. You will know your position. You will know your function. You will know things. And what you don't know, will you will know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one and his anointing or the Christ. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Who acknowledges the Son is the Father. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and the Father. This is the promise that he has promised us, what? Eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? deceive you there is more deception on this earth than has ever been before there's more delusion than ever before but there's also more truth <laughs> ever expressed before there's more revelation amen there are a lot of people getting lost but there's a lot of people getting saved <laughs> There are a lot of people departing from the faith and a lot of people coming to the faith. Verse 27. But the anointing which we have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. In other words, any human or anything of the world teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. <laughs> if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Hello. See, and, and, and I, and I want to share something before we go any further. There is a state of being of being born again. There's a state of being of being saved. Then there's a state of being of being born again. And it's all associated with the tabernacle. But I'm not going to get into all that. But we do have teachings on it. Saved or born again. But you want to walk in that born again state of being. And that's where you are. He who's in Christ is a new creation. Old things they have passed away. And all things are becoming new because you cannot feed new with old. You constantly must feed new with new to maintain new. Amen. But the enemy's going to try to sway. He's going to try to bribe. He's going to always try for you to buy the old in replace of the new. So being born again is a state of being. Why? Because it says he who practices righteousness. So if a person is practicing unrighteousness, is he a state of born again? No way. <laughs> he's not in the state of born again unless he is practicing righteousness. Is everybody okay? He says, these are the last days. You're going to know those who are practicing righteous. Why? Because you're going to need the anointing so we don't get deceived. Without the anointing, many people will be deceived. Many people are being deceived right now. Look at how many believers bo voted for an individual that promotes abortion. That's deception. How can they proclaim to be a believer, but yet not, not know the ethics and the moral character of an individual and whether his hands or her hands are full of blood or clean? Something's not right. And it's the area 
that we're in right now. One of the things in the last day's series that we're going to talk about, and I'm going to talk a little bit about today, is a perverse generation. There's going to be a generation, a perverse generation. That God warned us that would rise and take control, even in government. Go to Romans 11. Romans chapter 11. In verse 22. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing because how many believers are living together as boyfriend and girlfriend and calling themselves husband and wife, but they have never been married? under their own laws. One of the things that's going to happen is the area where, you know, that spirit of antichrist, and these are spirits of antichrist that come against, what happens is individuals begin to put their opinion above the word of God, or they manipulate God's word to their advantage, rejecting conviction, still touching unclean things, In verse 22, therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell. Severity, but toward you goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise you will also be what? Cut off. Verse 23. And they also, if they did not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. And if you are cut out of the olive tree, which is the wild, is which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature into the cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now that is a very important scripture. The reason, what he is saying, he's saying, listen, uh, look at the next scripture. And so all Israel be what? Saved. It is as written, the deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So we know that before the Lord can come, there is going to be, there is a set amount of Gentiles who will be saved before he comes. And that's what that scripture is talking about. It says right here in verse 25, it says, uh, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. That means the number of Gentiles. So there is a number of Gentiles that has been predestined that will be saved and come in before the Lord returns. That's why the Bible says that this gospel must be preached to all nations. But there is a set number that has been predetermined by God Almighty. And when that number comes up, it's over. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. Romans 16. In verse 17, would you read it with me? 16, 17. It says what? Now I urge you, brother, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and what? Avoid them. Why? Because they are going to become a part of a perverse generation. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but serve their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. 